Hello everyone, do you know Doris Payne, born in 1930, who is one of the greatest and one of the most notorious criminal thieves and jewel thieves of all time, with her career spanning over six decades. Her life has been a mixture of controversy, of intrigue, and of course, and most of all, an unyielding appetite for beautiful gems. She's a figure that's both infamous and admired for her daring exploits, and canny abilities to do so, and the audacity of her life's path. So you've guessed that today we're going to talk about the amazing story and the very long criminal career of Doris Payne. We're talking about this 93-year-old woman, who is known as the greatest diamond thief of all time. So let's dive right into it. So Doris Payne was born in Slab Fork in West Virginia, and she had a coal miner family. Her childhood was far from affluent, and she experienced firsthand the struggle of poor family in a racially segregated America in the 1940s. She was raised during the Great Depression, and she grew up witnessing the really hard conditions and the really harsh reality behind racial segregation, which was wrong on so many levels. But actually, her career in jewel theory began in her 20s, in a trip to a jewelry store, with just the intention to sell a watch that she had. Payne realized how easy she could manipulate this process into stealing things. She saw that with charm, with wit, and a convincing story. She could divert the salesperson and walk out the store like she had never been in it with a lot of very expensive jewelry, without being noticed. Using a lot of different aliases, social security numbers and disguises, of course. She really traveled the world with that idea of stealing from a lot of different jewelries. From Las Vegas to Monte Carlo, but also Paris and France and Tokyo and Japan. Really targeting the high L um, jewelry stores. She really had an uncanny ability to blend in into the higher class. And really cultivated a quite amazing knowledge about all of these jewelries. To fool the salesperson and just manipulate them and just steal everything they had. Or the most expensive jewelries they have. Which is really incredible is that it's been on 60 years and she's been to every place in the world to steal jewelry. So I'm gonna cite a few of her escapades that became really notorious and go with her story. First of all we got the Tiffany Heist. Once she went into Tiffany in New York, which of course is a beacon of luxury. Posing as a well-to-do diamond buyer, she engaged the staff in a seemingly harmless conversation for the salesperson. But what they did not know is that she was ready to do one of the biggest steals of all time. Just by expertly distracting them from their job of security and looking after the jewels, she actually walked out of the store with a $57,000 diamond ring. But despite being sued by law enforcement, she was never formally charged because there was a lack of evidence. Now, Number two, this one isn't in New York, it's in London, and it was really a close call. As she was visiting London, she was asking herself why not going to one of the most expensive jewelry in town. So she went in it and stole one of the most expensive jewelry pieces in that store, but she actually nearly got caught by security. But she was so talented in her art of distracting and manipulating people that she actually just convinced the guard that was, she just convinced the guard that was just a misunderstanding and that she was a very rich buyer and that she didn't find anything interesting. Interesting. And once again, her quick charm and her understanding of human behavior and her aptitude of keeping so calm in that situation actually led to her leaving the store with a very expensive robbery. Now number three, the De Beers theft. And it's one of her most audacious thefts. And she actually stole a diamond worth $22,000 in Monte Carlo. Using once again her technique of subterfuge and distracting people, she just put them in her pocket and exit the store. But it was at that moment that she was put on Interpol's radar. And that led to her being pursued uh, internationally. But however, she managed to evade capture for so long, despite being one of the most wanted thieves in the world. Now number four, we're going to talk about the arrest and the escape. The name of her fourth biggest robbery. She was actually arrested in 1981 in France, but however she actually escaped custody, making a daring escape by jumping over by one of the windows in the French courthouse where she was going to be judged. And she was on the run for the nine years afterwards, eventually being stopped in Switzerland in 1990. And now number five, Macy's incident. You maybe know Macy's, it's one of the biggest markets in the United States. And even in her 80s, Doris Payne still wasn't going to retire. In 2010, she was arrested for stealing a $8.9,000 diamond encrusted ring from Macy's in San Diego. But once again, even though she was more than 80 years old, she managed to divert the store's guard and actually distract them once again. And she refused to let go her life of crime, even at that age. 
I mean, she was really lucky in life to not have been caught and to be still free and stealing in your 80s, even though you're a criminal for more than 60 years. And she was quite lucky in life to never been caught for a very long time. She escaped for decades. But maybe her most famous uh, heist occurred in Monte Carlo in the 1970s. I kept this one for last. She stole a ring that had a value of over $500,000. And of course, after that, she was chased by Interpol and the FBI. But despite being briefly arrested and put in jail in Nice, she actually didn't have a long-term prison time because she actually used a fake passport, so a fake identity. And the diamond ring was never recovered, so we don't know where it is. And still today, I think that Doris Payne is 93 today, and I find that impressive that she still keeps these secrets. But even though she did some miraculous stealings, she wasn't always successful in her escapades. She was uh, arrested quite a lot of times and actually serving different periods of time in prison in different countries. But she always charmed the authorities, the judges and always had enough confidence to always get out of the situations that she was in, even after Interpol, the law, the FBI. But her life of crime, you might think, wasn't without remorse. But in interviews, Payne actually shared mixed feelings about her career, acknowledging the thrill that she had from stealing all this but knowing also the implications of her actions. But despite saying this, of course she couldn't help herself and in 2013, 15 and 17, she was arrested a few times for stealing and shoplifting high value items. Which is great and what I saw was in 2013 a documentary about her was released. It's called The Life and Crimes of Doris Payne and if you haven't seen it, of course, go watch it because it's such a... I'm not going to say an incredible story in a positive way because of course stealing is not good. And all of you 91 subscribers, I want to share with you this message of not stealing. But she had so much luck in her career and the never-ending will to steal is quite impressive to see, especially with a 93-year-old woman. And today Doris Payne has become a sort of a cult figure. I don't know if you heard of her, but I think that this in story was interesting to share to you. Her charm, audacity and longevity, which is really, really impressive, in a risky and of course illegal profession and made her a unique persona in the annals of crime history. So there it is, I really hope you liked this video. Of course, it'd be my pleasure to see you again, so if you could like and subscribe, it'd be my pleasure. I hope you have an amazing day. Uh, I was really glad to film this video because I tried to find the most uh, information I could about her and tried to make kind of a short video, maybe like five minutes, talking about her and talking about the life of Mrs. Doris Payne. So I hope you liked. See you very, very soon. In the meantime, have an amazing day. I'm sure you will. Take care, everyone. See you very, very soon. Bye-bye.